Hey everybody, I am Liz. Welcome to the Painters Retreat. I'm so excited to have you here. Um, as this is my free session, I know some of you may not already be a member. So welcome to anybody new here. As you come in, feel free to say hey and where you're watching from. I am so excited to paint with you. So I'm going to pause for a minute to make sure everybody gets a chance to get logged in and set up. Get my gloves ready so I don't have to scrub paint off my hands later. So let's get started. All right, so the first thing I like to do is get us started with our supplies. Once again, if you just pop in, I'm Liz Brent. I am your hostess for tonight, and I am so excited to have you here. Uh, so the supply list was already listed under this event on Crowdcast, but this is what you'll need. Paper towel or some type of rag to dab off your brushes or wipe up the spills. A paint palette. I'm using my plastic paint palette. You can use like a glass surface, a smooth surface. You can even use a paper plate. But the foam smooth plates are best because the paint won't absorb too fast. You also need a cup halfway filled with water. I'm using my paint puck brand cup. And then three brushes. So I've got my large uh, one inch flat. My half inch flat and my small round detail brush. Okay, so you need these three brushes. You can have a bunch in front of you, but I'm mainly gonna walk us through these three to get us going, okay? All right, uh, for those of you that are new here, the system is very similar to Facebook Live. So you'll see a chat box. If you have questions, feel free to type them in the chat box or just say, hey, as you come in, uh, at the bottom, you're going to notice there is a call to action that tells you you can join the painters retreat and you get four paint parties for $20 a month. That is my membership. So all those videos you probably saw when you registered for this, you get access to all of that with your monthly membership. Um, the painting we're going to paint is right here. It is called Le Leaving It in the Sunset. Um, it's one of my originals and I am excited to share it with you. So make sure you got all your supplies and then for paints. We're gonna use red, yellow, blue, black, and white. So the three primaries plus black and white, and I'll show you how to mix up everything else you need. So for red, I'm using cadmium red, medium hue. Yellow, I have cadmium yellow, medium hue. Black, I'm using Mars black. Blue, I'm using phthalo blue, but ultramarine blue is good. But whatever colors you have, whatever shade is fine. As long as you have red, yellow, blue, black, white. And then I'm using titanium white. I have the Liquitex brand. I love this brand because the paints are thick enough that you only need a little bit of time. They spread really easily. They blend really well. And they don't dry as fast as a lot of the cheaper acrylic paints. So acrylics are known to dry fast. For those of you who got some painting experience, you know that with oils, they dry a lot slower. Um, but this is a good alternative to have paints that don't dry super, super fast. Okay, so again, as you come in, feel free to say, hey, uh, canvas. So you can use canvas sheet, canvas panel, stretch canvas. I am using this canvas sheet um, in a size 18 by 24. And I'm doing it big just so that you can see it very easily on camera. But my original right there is actually a nine by 12. A nine by 12. Eight by 10 is also a good size for this. So if you're just checking this out and you're just practicing, it's a great idea to start small, okay? 
So then, let's see. We've got our paints, we got our brushes, we got our palette, paper towel, water cup. That should be everything you need. Also have something to drink close by. I got my water and my Dr. Pepper tonight because I do have an early work morning tomorrow. So I'm not doing nothing too risky. Uh, but have your favorite drink nearby. I have a little snack near you. Also, at the end of this, I would love it if you send me your pictures. You can tag me on Instagram at Liz Brent Art, on Facebook. You can email me, LizBrentArt at gmail.com. Um, and then also in the bio on my Crowdcast account where you signed up for this, it should take you to my website where you can also contact me that way. But I would love, love, love to see your pictures. At the end of this, also, if you are tuning in live, you have the opportunity to join in on Camera Live, too. So I love this system because it has the option, similar to Instagram Live, where you can actually join the screen with me and show your work. Uh, so if you're interested in that, just let me know in the chat box. Don't be shy. I know lately a lot of people have just been quiet during these, and it's okay. But if you want to say something, feel free to. All right, so I'm going to get us started. So I've got my canvas taped up here. Yesterday, mine like fell off in the middle of my, my live recording. So I'm hoping that does not happen today. I've got a little music going. I'm going to turn it up in a little bit once we get going with the painting. But I want to make sure you can hear me really clearly. Um, if you don't know anything about me, I am an artist. I am an art teacher. I own Brent Art LLC, which is my family's art business. We create custom and original art for people all over the country. And I also do paint parties. Because of the quarantine, I haven't been able to do in-person paint parties. So this was a good way for me to do it and still get, you know, get art out there and get the love of painting out there. And I started my membership for people to be able to enjoy this every single week. So you can learn new painting every single week on your own time and you get access to all replays. So I think it's a pretty good deal. Um, let me know if you got any questions about that. And again, I'm only wearing gloves because I get paint on my hands all the time during this and I do not want to have to scrub my hands so much. Okay, that's it. All right. So we about to get started. First, we're gonna start with putting our paint colors down. For right now, we're gonna start with the top background. We got that yellowish sky, that sunset. So I'm gonna mix up some yellow and some red to make a nice light orange, okay? So I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about. So first, grab some white paint and Sometimes I put out all the colors at once, but I'm gonna take you just step by step, a couple colors at a time. So I squeeze out some paint. I usually say about a quarter size, so like imagine if you put a quarter next to that to measure it. I'm gonna put a little more just because I have this giant canvas and I'm gonna need more paint. So the smaller canvas you have, the less paint you need. Okay, so we got some white. We're also gonna need some yellow and some red. So you want to space them out so that they don't mix before you want them to. I'm going to put my yellow over here. About the same amount. I'm running low. I need to refill. Okay. And then a little bit of red. So I'm going to do a lot less small of a spot for red. Because we don't need that much. Again, as you come in, feel free. As you come in, feel free to say, hey, where are you from? I am joining y'all from Chicago. Okay, so I've got those colors out there. And the very first thing I want to do is mix up a, a light medium orange. So with acrylics, I like to teach people to go from darker to lighter shades. As far as blending, it makes it a lot easier. So that's what we're going to do. So first, I want you to pick up your biggest brush that one inch flat, okay? And we're gonna mix up a light shade of orange. So first we're gonna start with yellow. And I'm gonna bring it a little closer to that red. That's what I'm gonna mix it up, all right? Pick a tiny bit of red at a time because since red is the darker color, it's gonna change it really, really fast. So you always go add the darker color to the light. And you see, as soon as I put that, it immediately changed it. So that's what I mean by going a little bit at a time so you can adjust as needed. All right, so I'm using my brush. A lot of the people also like to use a paint palette, I mean palette knife. And that's just so that you don't have to use your brushes to mix up paint. But for beginners, I just go ahead with the brush. Okay, 
So you want to wipe off any excess so you don't have chunks on your brush. So I'm wiping off any excess on the edge. This way the paint can spray really nice and not take forever to dry. Now I know a lot of people like to use um, clump, like not clumps, but like add texture to their paintings that way. And there is a time and place for that. But for this one, we want it to be nice and smooth. All right, before we even start painting, we want to figure out where is that horizon line in the picture? Where does that water actually stop and, and where does the sky stop? We're going to use this to just make a line so we know where to stop and not go too far. So if we look at that picture. I made my water line start about here and it's like slightly below half. We don't want to just split it in half, kind of makes the picture boring. We want to make it nice and interesting by not having it completely split in half. So I'm going to bring my line about here. So about a third of the way down or up, whatever, whichever way you want to look at it. And then I'm just going to use this brush. I'm holding it horizontally and I'm just going to map out a line. It's okay if it's not completely straight. We're going to touch it up and fix it later. But that way we know where we're stopping. And let me tilt my camera a little bit so I can make sure you can see the very bottom of my canvas too. Okay. Now that we have that, we're about to go ahead and just start using the same color to fill up this whole background. So I'm going to pick up some more. And I'm going to hold my brush vertical for this one because I want to use the width of the brush to help me spray it. So I'm just going back and forth like that. And I always encourage people to use up what you have on a brush before you get more because one, you can make the mistake of putting too much on at once. And also you waste paint. And paint is not cheap all the time. Like you might have some cheap paints, but quality paints like these, they're $10 a bottle. I say this every time, but I do not want to waste any of that. Plus now with the quarantine, paints are just like limited and like people have been buying them up. So you want to save them as best as you can until you're able to stock up. So I used up what was on my brush. Then once I start running low, so once you see it get like thin like that, that's how you know you need more paint. So first I'm gonna actually dip my brush in a little bit of water. I'm gonna dip it, dab it on a paper towel because you don't want your brush dripping. If you put a dripping wet brush on here, all that will just run and have, you know, drip spots. So dab off any excess. Use that wet brush to see if you can spray it a little bit more. Then if it's still thin, you pick up more paint. But that's a good way to preserve what you have. Okay? So we'll spread that out. And go all the way to the top with the same color. Okay, y'all, that sounds just a little bit too much for this. Okay. Yeah, I don't know how I just went from that song to this one now. I switched up my playlist tonight, and I'm supposed to be playing some like more upbeat party songs, so we we gonna work with it. Okay, we are going to work with it. Double checking my camera, making sure everything is good. We're gonna fill up the whole background with this color. You do not have to paint as fast as me. I'm doing this to make sure I'm keeping speed with the size that you might be using. I'm just so used to painting that I can kind of do it a little bit quicker. But no need to rush it. Again, make sure you dip in your brush in water to help that paint spread before you just add more paint to your brush. Thank you. 
Got any questions as we go on? Feel free to type it in the chat box. Y'all got so many paintings over in my house. I'm gonna see if I can show them while I'm in here. Um, but I absolutely love to paint. It is just so calm, especially now having to like really change things up and like not being able to be out and do many things. Painting is definitely keeping me grounded. Okay, I accidentally picked up a little red, but that's okay. It works. Actually, need to fill up my yellow a little bit. Don't just stop because we don't want these little marks in it. So I'm going to follow the way that I want the paint to show up in the picture. I want that uh, horizon and the sky to look like it's going side to side. So I'm going to make sure my brush follows those strokes. Let's see if this doesn't fall off tonight like yesterday. I'm hoping it doesn't. I got little pieces of tape, you'll notice, but that's just because this is my demo. Typically, I would tape it evenly around the sides, but I'm going to make sure I cover that up. Getting some more paint. Oh, my arm is going to be so tired. I have to have some good muscles. This is still an orangish yellow. We're mixing up in here. Spread that all the way across. Don't leave any white spots in your canvas. Okay. Ooh, mom. Okay. Now, now that we have that, you see at the top of the picture, it's actually a little bit brighter. So what we're gonna do is mix up a yellow with a little bit of white to create that gradation, like a little ombre effect. So first we're gonna start with white. I'm gonna separate this a little bit just so it's not right next to that yellow. And pick up a little bit of yellow, a little bit on my brush. Mix that in right here. We want a really, really light yellow. So right now it's too bright, it's kind of almost, it's basically an off-white, so let's add a little more yellow. We just want to make sure that shade is lighter than what's already there, so it really stands out. But we don't want it to be too different. Okay. That's good, let's do this. Okay. So we have this color now. Again, if you're just popping in, be sure to say hey and where you're from. Right 
Right now we just did a yellow and orange mix, but it's okay if you feel like you might be far behind. After this ends, the replay will be posted within like five minutes of it finishing, so you will also be able to see this later. So first I just mixed some yellow and red together and got this color, and now I just mix some white and yellow together, and I'm gonna put this at the top. So I'm gonna brush that right in there. You see how different of a shade that is now? Okay. Let me make sure I adjust my camera again so you can see the whole thing. There we go. Okay. So I'm putting that light yellow across the whole top. And I'm going to take that down to about here. Just to make it look a little interesting towards the top. Again, if your brush dries out, just dip it in a little bit of water. Spread it across. I got a couple different tones in there, and it's okay. It's going to look good once it's finished. I mean, it looks good now. I like it. Pick up some more of that light yellow. So I want this to really stand out. Okay. Bring that down a little bit more, maybe about right here. So it's more noticeable. Dip it in a little water, dab it on my paper towel, spread it across. Look how that looks. Okay. I'm doing a little bit more. Again, if you have questions while we're going, feel free to type it in the chat box. Don't be shy. Okay. And then to make sure this blends together, don't just leave a straight line. And if you do have a straight line, I'll show you how to fix that. So let me make that a line, actually. Let's say you have it like that. Mine is still pretty blended. Okay. Let's say you have it and you have this line. All you need to do is dip your brush in some water, dab it on your paper towel so it's not dripping, and then just go over that line with the damp brush and brush it down lightly and it'll just blend together. Okay. We got that. A little bit more. I'm gonna go over this. I'm gonna pick up some white now just to lighten that top up a little bit more to give some more tone to this picture. Oops. Again, I'm using canvas sheet. So you might see it move around a little bit. All right, I'm gonna leave that alone. So spread this out. I'm like how that looks. Okay. I'm gonna let this dry after I blend this out. So again, I got this really strong white. I dip my brush in the water, dab it on my paper towel so it's not dripping, and go over it, so a little bit more water. And just blend that in by brushing across it with that damp brush. Okay, so this way is not such a stark line. Okay. 
that. Now I got a hard line. Okay, let me fix that a little bit more. This is what I get from doing too much and messing with it too much. I'm just bring this down a little lower so I can blend that better. There we go, that's better. Okay. All right, I'm gonna leave that alone. That's the background. Anyway, it's gonna cover the leaves. You won't be able to see it as much. I'm gonna leave it. Now, clean out that brush because we're gonna make the blue water next. So, let's see. Pick up your brush. I'm gonna stir it in water. I like this brand because it has ridges at the bottom and it makes it a lot easier to clean it and I don't have to change my water during this whole time. All right, tap off any excess. Wipe it on my paper towel. Coming off a little red so I know it's not clean. I gotta clean that again. Make sure it's not showing up with red or yellow in it. Now it's good stuff. Now we need some blue. So in another spot on my palette, I'm gonna pour out my blue paint. Again, the same amount we did before for the white, so about a quarter size. Pretend you're measuring it with a coin quarter next to it. About that much. So make sure it's enough to cover your background. Because I have such a large canvas, I'm gonna do more. But if you're working with something like that size over there, nine by 12, a quarter size amount should be good for you. I'm gonna add a little bit extra to mine. Okay. I'm gonna add a little bit of white to this because we don't want it this dark right away. So I'm gonna use that big brush. And I have some white over here. If you add a white, you can put some over there next to it. But I'm gonna scoop some of this over so I can mix it together. Okay. And I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of the blue. Add that to it. So I want a nice medium blue to start with. That's still a little bit light, so I'm gonna pick up more blue. And this is just to start with. Chances are I'm gonna need to make more, which is why I have that right there next to me, because I have such a big space to fill. But this is a good blue. Actually, a little bit more. This will be a good blue to start with. Okay, I like that. All right, so let's put that on our camera. So again, like I showed you with the top, you're gonna hold your brush Vertically, make sure you rub off any excess so you don't have chunks and it's not going to take you forever for it to dry. And then first, I like to trace this line right up against it so I can make sure it's nice and straight and know where I'm stopping to. So maybe like right underneath it because if it's not dry, it's going to turn green. So just be careful. And if it's not straight, it's okay. We're going to fix it later. Plus, you got the leaves that's going to be in the forefront. So it don't even matter. Now I'm starting to see this not even straight. Let me straighten it out. No, it went too high. This one, I just got to leave stuff alone. Okay. I'm going to leave that for now. Now, I'm going to take my brush and hold it vertically. Use the width of the brush to spread it across. Spread it across. I'm using it until it dries up. When it gets dry like that, I'm going to dip it in a little bit of water. Dab it off. Try to stretch that out a little bit with some water first. You see how that just helps? Then once it happens again, I'm like, okay, I can pick up more paint. So this is how I like to preserve paint to make sure I'm not using too much when I don't have to. Spread this across. You see how much faster this is spreading than it, the yellow did? That's because blue is so much stronger than the yellow that it only takes a little bit to be able to cover an area. So I'm just spreading this across. Making sure I don't see any spots from the canvas. Again, if you just now pop it in, make sure at the end or whenever you finish this painting, send me a picture. You can send it to me on Instagram at Liz Brent Art or Facebook, same name. You can email me, LizBrentArt at gmail.com. So this is a little bit of a, a look into what I do every week. 
through my painters retreat, which is my monthly membership. And every week me and my members get together like this and paint a new painting. So it's a really good way to learn acrylic painting. It's a good way to chill. And also to create some new artwork that you can hang up in your house. So when you register, you probably saw my gallery of other paintings we've done. And as a member, you get access to all of those anytime you want. So if you were to sign up today, you could actually go and watch all of those whenever you want to and paint those as well. And you get access to any upcoming paintings. So I've got the little green button down there below the video. You can see if you're interested, you can just click that button. It's, that button is says to join the Painters Retreat. You get four paint parties a month for $20. Super cheap. Four paint classes for $20. Like, I don't think you're getting that anywhere else. So I got started doing this, I think January 2019. Um, well, first I worked at a paint sip studio for a couple of months. And then that couple, I think, what was it? That was in the summer. So like June, I was at a paint sip studio. That following January, I was like, you know what? I could do this on my own. Started hosting like bars and restaurants. Then I hosted like private ones. I was going to people's houses hosting them. Then I had a couple lined up between like March, April, May, and June. Got canceled because of this pandemic. And that's when I started doing virtual paint parties. So now I've got a couple private virtual ones coming up. So that has been a lot of fun. And this is just a good way for me to relax and to share what I love with other people. And I just really believe that painting doesn't have to be hard. I remember when I first started learning, like, I just felt like it was so tough. I started when I was in high school. Even though my dad and my brother were artists, like, I never thought that I would be that good at it. So this is just years of practice. So I, I, made, I uh, took a lot of art class in high school. I majored in art education in college. Got my degree in art education, so I taught high school and elementary, and then now art center, so I teach adults too, and then I also have my master's in special education, so I've done special education classes as well. So this is just a nice way for me to use everything I know all in one, and I just really love it. So for those of you watching and joining me, and I really appreciate you following my journey. Okay. Got the blue done. Let's see. Now, we can actually go in with some highlights before this even dries. So first, this is a good time to make sure your line is straight, which mine is not completely. So I'm going to touch this up. You probably can't see it from there, but I got like a little bit of a white space here. So now is a good time to straighten up your line. And then once you've done that, this is also a good moment to pause take a break bathroom break grab something to sip on eat on we do want this to dry up a little bit before the highlights just so it doesn't just blend together and doesn't give us a really strong effect of a highlight so i would say like a minute and it won't be completely dry but it'll be like tacky and dry enough that we can go over it okay all right so dip my brush in my water to clean it while i'm waiting Sip my Dr. Pepper because again, I got an early morning, so I cannot sip nothing else right now. Okay. I'm liking how it's looking so far. I hope y'all's looking good too. I'm sure it is. Okay. So yeah, let's give this about 50 more seconds to dry. Got my paints, and then so after that, we're gonna mix up a lighter shade of blue. Yeah, get the highlights. Yeah, it's gonna be good. I realize I'm going kind of fast too. It's only been what 35 minutes. That's pretty good time. This is a it's a pretty short painting. It looks super super detailed, but there are tiny little details. But it's pretty much a simple painting. Um. This is also a great moment for me to show you some other things I've worked on. So let's see if I can knock, knock, not knock this down. All right, so again, as a member, you get access to all, learning all my paintings. 
um, get to learn how to do all of them. So this was one I just did yesterday. I didn't, I mean, I painted this a while back, but um, I painted during quarantine. I was just inspired, but I topped this one yesterday and I did it giant. Oh my goodness. Like this is the one I painted yesterday. So it's the same size as this one. That is my red tulip painting. And then, so that's already in the gallery for you to watch once you remember. And then this giant one is called Love Springs Eternal. I think we did this one last week in the group. So I sat and painted this. So these are all my originals that I'm doing. And then what else do I have? I need to start like framing this stuff because I've just got stacks of paintings. I got my Tulips 2020 painting. That's also in the gallery. This is a small version of Love Springs Eternal that I first did. Then I have Spring Fling. We've got the Cherry Blossoms. I've got a couple of these. And then, I think that's it. I've got, oh my goodness, I've got so many of the Tulips 2020. I did, I think, I taught it here, and then I had maybe two paint parties for one of those back to back. And then, I haven't uploaded this one yet, but this is, y'all, I got so many, I'm starting to forget names, Lovebirds. So this is what I did on Facebook Live when I first started doing these. So I need to upload that video into the membership so that members also have access to that. So yeah, this is a nice chill way to learn to paint and just to hang out with some painters. I do have a Facebook group set up, but I know like a lot of people aren't really too into Facebook anymore. So I'm setting up another community space for the painters retreat. That way we can all post pictures and you know, interact in the community more all right so this should be dry enough now okay so let's see we're gonna use we need some medium brush for the highlights so i'm gonna pick up my half inch medium brush and it's gonna be a lighter blue so i'm gonna take some of my white and i'm just scoot it close to the blue so I don't have to go so far and mix it. Then I'm gonna pick up a tiny bit of blue at a time because we wanna make a shade that's lighter than what's already there. But we don't want it to be too bright where it's not really a believable highlight. All right, gonna smooth that in. All right, and we can look at that. This is a pretty good shade. It's really close to this. It's not too bright. It's not the same exact. I think that'll seem out really nice. Because we want something that's really going to show up behind those leaves. Okay, so we're going to use this blue. Fill up your brush. Rub off any excess. All right. So then to start with the highlight, the first thing I like to do is drag this across. So I'm holding my brush horizontally for this one to make like a thinner line. And first, I'm going to just go really close to that horizon. So I'm still leaving a little bit of dark blue above it. But I'm going to take this across. Make sure my brush is still wet because I don't want this to be super dry. Oh, okay. It's crooked, but we gonna fix it. It's cool. All right, so I start with that. Then I slowly bring it down in streaks, and it's gonna go like a V shape to create that highlight. So I'm gonna dip my brush in a little bit of water, so it's not super dry. Keep my paper towel close by, so it's not dripping. And then I drag this paint out in streaks. So I'm using what's already there. So I'm just dipping it in the water, dabbing it off. I'm not picking up any extra paint right now 
I'm just using what's already there to brush it down. Okay, brush it into the water. If it starts to look dry, you grab a little bit more water, dab it off. I'm still not picking up paint. I'm using what's already there. Spread it down. And then, as I go down, I'm going to slowly stay towards the center. So I'm still just using water in my brush. Now it's getting a little bit thinner. I'm going to pick up some more paint because I don't want that to disappear. And now I'm still holding it horizontal. So I'm getting those streaks in there. So now that I've come off that horizon line, I don't have to keep it so close together and nicely blended. I can actually streak it out, and that'll make it look even more natural like a highlight. So we'll try to create that little streaky V shape towards the center, going towards that uh, triangle shape. I'm just wetting it and just rubbing it back and forth. So a good way to do it is to make zigzags, so like that. And then you just put streaks in between the zigzags. So I know I was moving kind of quick. But then you go back in between those zigzags you made and do more zigzags to make it closer together. Okay, so right now it's really, really tight of a triangle. I don't want it that tight. I'm gonna blend it out some more so it spreads out more and it's still gonna make that shape, but just not so tight because we want this to be like a believable um, sheen of light. I always forget what, what words are when I'm doing these things. Okay. Y'all are getting the very unedited version of me. My last one, I forgot. I was trying to say something that looked like a crystal ball, and I couldn't remember what a crystal ball like was called. And I said a round globe-like fortune teller thing. And then I was like, oh yeah, a crystal ball. Okay. So spread that across. I know y'all probably at home like, what is this girl talking about? All right. Still zigzagging. Bring it to the center. Dipping it in the water. Spread it across. I'm just blending that a little bit more. Still too tight. So we want that to come out more. So I'm going to go over that again with that same light blue. I want that to come out a little bit. So a nice gradation towards the center. That's, that's getting better. It's so hard to paint from this angle. <laughs> Y'all are like, Hopefully get it easier because you get to look directly at it, but I'm all over to the side and looking from the camera. And, but it's cool. I'm just streaking that in. So I just streak them out. See if it's where I want it to be based on my picture. Dip my brush in a little water to go over this. Y'all, I hope this is the instrumental of the song because I know it's not clean. Hold on. Nope. I can't run the risk. This is supposed to be royalty-free music I'm playing, y'all, so I don't know what Spotify is doing. So in case somebody come on like, oh, copyright. Nope. I clicked royalty-free. I don't know why they playing. You know. See all my witnesses today. I'm still gonna dip that in a little bit of water and just soften out the edges. I don't want it to stop so abruptly. Just get that streaky as you would like it. And you want it to be kind of symmetrical on each side. So, you know, the stopping point over here should be about the same over there. Now I gotta fix up this side to match it. Y 
Again, if you got questions, feel free to pop them in the chat. But hopefully, that just means y'all have not asked some questions because y'all got it. You're killing it. I'm explaining it well. Hopefully, hopefully. Okay. That's a good foundation. Now, we want this to stand out even more. So we want some more white highlights, okay? Make that stand out a little bit more. So now, I'm going to pick up some more white paint. And to that light blue we made, mix some white into that. So it's going to be a really, really light blue. And I'm going to add a couple bright highlights on top of that. Let me show y'all again. Very bright blue. And then towards the center, I'm going to hold my brush horizontal again. And I'm just staggering lines towards the center to really create that light. Because we're going to put a sun up there in a minute. So we want this to really glisten. Okay. Have a nice shine in our water. Just staggering my lines. Spread that out like that. You see that highlight in there? Okay. Still want to shape that. Yeah, this is better. So now. Just throw in some stuff because look, those leaves are going to cover it anyway. So we just want our background underneath it to not be worn. So we want this water to look nice and interesting underneath it. Also, if at any point you can't hear me and you see my mouth moving, let me know because I haven't had a problem with sound. You know, hopefully I don't jinx myself, but I always say that like, hey, if something goes out, let me know that you can't hear me. Okay. That's cool. I want to do more to it, but it's easy to overwork it and like do too much. So I'm going to just leave that. Actually, add a couple more really light streaks towards the center where my sun's going to be. And then I'm going to stop and leave it alone. Okay. Okay. Not yet. Hold on. Okay, right here. Let me get a little bright and see how it's looking on on the camera because I can't see it too good up close because I'm too close to it. It's always a good idea to step back and look at your work from a distance because it's gonna look completely different. And it's really, honestly, all about what it looks like from distance. Okay, painting is an illusion. It's what you can make people see. So, what can you make people see from a distance? Okay, I'm gonna leave that because I. I will easily do too much. I'm going to just smooth this out so it don't take too long to dry. Okay, leaving it. Leaving it. Okay, now, clean this brush out because we do need it for our sun. And we're going to pick up some white paint for this next part. Stir this around. Clean that out. Wipe it on your paper towel. Make sure you're not getting any color coming out. Because if it's white, you don't want it to mix with anything and throw off the whole look of the sun. So then, picking up the straight white paint. I just use this over here to smooth it out. And then... Just to fill up my brush with it. I don't want like a thick coating of the white. Nice and thin. Okay. So now look towards the center of your painting. And it looks like the sun is like closer to the horizon line than it is to the top of the painting. So it's about here. And your sun should line up with that light ray you created. Okay. That shine in the water. So I think mine 
Yeah, it should be about there. Yes. Okay. So I like to do it by first putting my brush to make my point of where it's going to go. And then I'm actually going to just press in and stir my brush slow, slowly outwards to make that sun. Because I'm not good at drawing circles neatly. Maybe you are and you could try that. But if not, press it in, stir it out, create that sun. Okay, so that's what I'm doing. I'm pressing it in and I'm slowly twirling my brush. Okay, got a nice little bitty sun. But I just want you to see how it's looking. I'm going to make that a little bit bigger. Okay, keep twirling. And it's nice to press it in because it's actually still mixing with that background color. Because um, that's not even completely, completely dry. And this way, it's not just a super bright white sun. It's blending into what you already got. So smush that out. I think that's a good size. Mine just doesn't look as round as I want it to be. So I'm going to just go over it again. Yes, I'm going to leave that because I know I'm going to do too much if I don't. Okay. Nice. That's good. All right, so leave it. Look at it from a distance. And then next we are going to get ready for our vines in the foreground. And before that, I'm doing the most again. And I'm going to have to touch this spot up because I feel like I need to make this a little bit brighter here. Please feel free to judge me because I always end up doing the absolute most. But I'm showing y'all all the tricks. I'm not holding nothing back just because this is a free session. Y'all are getting some techniques okay i'm gonna leave that alone okay because i'm gonna do too much all right let that drop great time for a bathroom break rinse this brush out don't let it sit there with paint on it and get dry um yes let that sit let that dry because next we're going to do our vines using black paint and our thin brush for that one so i'm going to use a brush that is this size, okay? So you need something like that. So if you don't have that, now's a great time to go ahead and grab it. And I'm gonna adjust my music as we wait for this to dry. Okay. Take a nice sip break. While we're waiting, we can get our black paint ready because we're going to thin it out a little bit to get it to spread smoothly. So what I'm going to do is grab some black paint. I don't need too much, like a little bit smaller than a quarter for this right there. And I'm gonna create a pool of paint. So not using my small brush to mix it. I'm gonna use my medium brush just to be able to mix it. Okay. So what I'll do is pick up my brush. I dip my brush in water and it's dripping. You know, usually I say don't pick up a dripping brush, dab it off. We're gonna let that water drip into that black paint. And that's how we're gonna thin it out. You may already have some fluid black acrylic, which is perfect. But if not, this is the perfect way to do it. So now that black is a little bit more runny. And we want this because it makes it a lot easier to smoothly glide that small brush to create those vines without having to like start and stop. Because you know how you drag and then it dries up and then it dries up. But this is gonna stretch it a little bit longer. Kind of like making it into an ink. So I'm picking up some more water. It's really wet. I'm dipping that super wet brush in there to make that more watery. Okay. So get a good amount ready. And 
And this is probably gonna be dry enough actually to go ahead and start these lines. Cause if it's not, all it's gonna do is just like streak through the blue a little bit. And we can always go over that later too once it dries. But this, I think this will be a good stage to at least map it out. Okay, nice inky black. All right, so I don't need this brush now. I'm gonna wipe off any excess so I don't waste it. And then rinse that brush out. And then pick up your smaller brush. Now for me, I'm not gonna use this tiny brush because this canvas is so big that I actually want them to look thicker. But for you, if you're using a small canvas like that eight by 10 or nine by 12 size, this will be a good one to use. But I'm gonna use, hmm. actually I'm gonna use my other flat. It's like a flat half inch angle brush because I'll be able to do like a nice thicker line with this one. All right, so first I'm gonna dip that in a little bit of water, dab it off. Put my brush in that paint, soak it up to get it ready. And it's like I'm turning it because it's starting to drip. That's how like watery I made the paint and that's how you want it to be. Wipe off any excess. Now let's draw out these vines. Okay. So the first one, let me turn my music down, make sure y'all can really hear the details. Okay, this first one starts about in the corner. It comes up in curves, and then it comes up in curves here. So I'm gonna take it slow, and we can even do it piece by piece, okay? So first, we start at the bottom corner, and you can also freestyle this. You do not have to do the same exact shape as I did, um, another good way to do it actually could be also to start from the center and we want our vines to like wrap around the sun and we don't want to actually go through it. That's another good way to start. So let's see. The first one we can start at the top. I see that it goes about here. So it comes around kind of like a backwards question mark or even like an S shape and comes towards the center. So I'm going to do that. So start above the sun. I'm going to start making an S shape. So it comes around, comes right underneath the sun. It's looking like a backwards question mark, but now I'm bringing it towards the center. That's our first line, okay? So it's like a hook. And I always like to break shapes down into something simple that you can think of. Because otherwise it's like, oh, how do I get this line as precise as that? But really, Make this your own thing too. You can just start making some swirls. It's gonna all come together. I know the last time I taught this painting, everybody had something different and it was so cool. Some people even did like palm trees. So feel free to jazz it up. All right, so then I'm gonna do the next part. So still sticking to this one, I see that I have this curves around and then down here, I've got a shorter one that I actually had come up and towards the line. So it goes up, kind of like I'm making a heart and I just curved it, okay? Then a little bit lower, I have another one. Curved it. And then towards the bottom, I actually went up and curved this way. So I'm gonna do that. So I'm gonna start about here and curve it out. You can make it like super curly if you want to just to make it look a little interesting. Okay, so let me double check if I got all the ones that I want on this one, yes. Okay, and then on the right side of it, there's one that comes out of this corner and kind of swoops around. So the first one actually comes out and curves just a little bit like a little hook. So out of this right corner, I'm gonna bring it out and then hook around. So bring it out and hook around. The main thing, I just didn't overlap too many of these. I kind of kept them spaced out. And that's how you want to do it. Loving my headphones. Alexa, stop. All right, then we're gonna do another line. So that one comes out. Now we have towards that corner, it comes out and up more. And we could even make it go off the pen if you want to. That's also interesting. But let's see. I'm going to probably keep it in the pan. So this part's going to come up and out. And I'm going to curve that one. OK. 
Okay. Pick up a little more paint. Looks like I've got one that comes up in there. And then I have one that extends really high up to the corner. It's gonna extend and curve. See that got a little bit dry, but it's okay. It's gonna work out. All right, so we got that one, got that one. Next, this side, so it's really like three vines and there's like little ones that split off. So yeah, one, two, we need one more. So this one comes out of this corner. It's gonna go around. We can even cross it through here. So it comes around and goes up. So we're gonna do a piece by piece. It's gonna come out of this corner. We got one that comes up above the horizon. Then there's a little piece that's actually right below the horizon line. Let me make sure I wipe off my brush so it's not chunks of paint on it. Okay. So this one we've got, let's put this one above, just so it's not the same as that one. Then we've got, this one we did, now we gotta come up and go really high. So out of the center of this one, I'm gonna come up and cross over there. And keep in mind that these are gonna be what our leaves are gonna be on, so we want it to kind of spread out, okay? So it's gotta kind of make sense that these leaves are sticking to something. Okay, so we got that going up. There's one that comes out here. And let's put a couple here because this is looking kind of empty. Let's do one like that. And then just a little line. So take up some more space. Okay. I think I like that. So we got this over here. I'm going to add a little something there so it's not so empty. Okay. Nice. Now, I'm going to let that dry for a minute because the next step is to make our green to add these leaves in. So we're going to use the same brush again. So I'm going to clean this out. So if you are still outlining your lines, you can go ahead and do that. But I'm going to rinse my brush out. Again, make sure you send me your pictures. I can't wait to see how these turn out. And then, if not tonight, tomorrow, for those of you in the membership, I'm going to be posting the poll to vote on what the next painting is going to be. Um, so if you're not in a membership, it's a good time to join in so that you get a chance to vote for the next painting. And then once again, you get to paint with me every single week for one monthly fee of $20. So y'all probably post that. It's been a long day, so maybe not tonight, probably tomorrow. I'll probably post that tomorrow. Post some different options that we haven't done yet. I got a couple I'm working on, too, on my wall that nobody has seen yet. Okay. So we have those up there. We are now going to make our green paint. Okay. So we have... We're going to start with yellow. So we're going to make yellow and blue if you don't already have green. So scoop out this yellow. We need a good amount because we have a lot of leaves. So I'm actually putting down more yellow than I have on my palette. So let's see, let me stir up this yellow. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of blue at a time to make this green. So we have two shades of green. We have a deep green and a light green. We wanna start with the deep green first. So we always work dark to light with acrylics. So pick up this blue. And we're gonna stir it into our green. I mean, our yellow to make green. So I'm stirring that in. And you know, on a big area of it, cause we're actually gonna have a couple shades of green. Well, let's make three. So this is one, this will be our mid-tone. We also want to make a deeper shadow tone and then our highlight. So I'm mixing that in. Okay. That's a good mid-tone. Next, 
we are going to add a little bit more blue. So part of this, let's see. I'm gonna pick up some more blue. This spot right, or actually this spot right here, I'm gonna make darker. So I'm gonna add some blue to this. You see how I got a nice deep green? So let's make sure we have that and a portion of it so we don't have to mix it later. So got that there. Okay, mix that up. Oops, I picked up a little bit of yellow. Let me stir that out. So we're gonna mix this up. I love how my music volume just changes randomly. Let's do a little more blue. And then it stops randomly. Of course. Okay. It's a little more blue. Make a nice hunter green, nice and deep. Okay. So we got this over there. Then we have our mid-tone. Also, we want to highlight. So let's take this brush, clean it out first. We're going to add some white to that green to make it lighter. And now we need a little bit of white. And a portion of this, we're going to lighten it up. So not all of it, because we still want to have three different shades in there. Okay. Nice. I think that's a good highlight. So we got three shades of green, dark, medium, light. So I'm going to spread this out right here. Okay, three shades. Now, rinse this brush out. We're gonna start with that deep green first. So we're using our medium brush. And then we're gonna dip our brush in the deep green. And to make these leaves, the shape is kind of up to you. I'm gonna show you the way that I did for the picture. I just used the shape of this flat medium brush to just dab the leaf shapes on there. So for example, I started at the bottom and just pressed my brush down and dragged. I can show you something up a little bit closer too. I'll show you on a piece of palette paper that I have. So on the back, so let's say this is our vine. Let's say that's vine. I just press this brush down and I use the shape of that brush to create these leaves. So that's all I'm doing, okay? So I'm gonna do it right here again to show you. So I'm pressing them down and I'm staggering it to make it look more leafy. And then as I go up, I'm gonna spread out and do a lot more, okay? So we're just using this deep green right now all over. So spread them out. Don't make them right next to each other. We want to keep it interesting. We're going to start first next to the uh, vines and then we'll spread out to fill up any empty space in between. If you want to take your time and draw leaves a certain way, if you want to make them round, that's perfectly fine too. Just using the shape of that brush. And as you go through it, so now that I've got past this point, I see how it's still kind of thin around it. I can add in between. So even though I don't have vines coming out, I can still fill up that space. If it bothers you, you can add little vines later. But really, they're gonna be so close together that you nobody will even be able to tell that you kind of just made up that space. So now I'm thinking it out. 
because in that original picture is nice and full and this is the process of it just spread them out okay just doing what's close to me first and i'm still using deep green we're not using any other shade yet using the shape of that brush to get it. Spread that out. Still use my deep green. Spreading that out. Okay, still staggering it. I'm loving the effect that's coming out already. So I don't have too many or too little so far. I'm liking how it's looking. Okay, so just keep going all the way up. Make sure you spread them out. Not making it too uniform, make it nice and interesting looking. Just spreading them out. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Add a little bit of water to my brush so it's not too dry. And there we go. Just spreading them out. And up here, I'm going to look at how that's looking. So it's kind of thin compared to the bottom. So now I'm going to add some around it so it's not too thin looking. Okay. I'm still using my deeper green. Nice and spread out. Following the shape of that swirl, whatever the curves I made, I'm still just using the shape of that brush to paint it. Join me on screen and show your painting at the end. Just let me know in the chat box. I know a lot of people usually are like, oh no, that's too much. So you definitely don't have to, but the invitation is open. Still working on my dark green.
filling up this space a little bit. Shaping that around the sun. Add some over here. Mix some that around. Pick up some more of this green. I keep running out so fast. Let me mix up a little bit more. Yeah. Okay. Take that around. Don't forget to look at it from a distance too to see how it's looking next to everything else. You also notice that the leaves, even though I use the same shade of the green, in some spots it's going to look brighter or darker uh, based on where it is. So like in the center where I've got the lighter blue behind it, you see that the green leaves are lighter and over here it's darker. So it's interesting to see how like one shade can look on so many different backgrounds. Put that in there. Okay, let me spread that out some more. Nice. I like that I added those extra curves too. So it's not just straight lines and plain. All right, so let's keep using that brush. Bring that around. Okay, all right. Couple more spots for the top before we get to our next shade of green, which is that medium mid-tone green. And it's really gonna like bring out these leaves, especially in like the darker areas of the painting. Okay, I want this to be a little more full, so I'm gonna add a couple more around here. Okay. Okay, I like that. Nice. Okay. Actually, I'm going to add, because right here it looks kind of thin, and that's just because that light blue, I'm going to put a little more of that deep green in here just to make it look a little bit more full. Every time I drop something, y'all, oh my goodness. So I'm going to make this more full before I add those highlights because that will really brighten it up and I don't want it to look too thin so I'm gonna just put a little more deep green in here before we move to the next step and then we'll be here okay I'm good with that nice all right so now is the mid-tone green so the mid-tone we don't have to add everywhere because we do want this stuff to like stand out as it is too in some places so first I'm gonna rinse this brush out and then let's see i'm gonna rinse this out 
And next we're going to mix up or pick up this um, mid-tone green. So this shade right here that we made, we're only going to put it in a couple spots. So only a couple of spots that we really want to stand out. So towards the sun is where like things should be a little bit lighter. So like anything in this surrounding area, we want to add those highlights to add like little glimmers of sunlight, okay? So I'm going to pick up this medium green and look at the, the leaves that are like closest to the sun, okay? So like here, I'm just put a little dab of that green on top of it. I'm not going to completely cover it, but I'm going to just use that to kind of accent it. Okay, let's see. So any spots that are really facing the sun, I'm just dab in the medium green. And right now from a distance, it probably blends a lot. Um, but up close, you can see that it makes a difference. And then after this, we're gonna end up adding the highlight so that really bright green. So we're still just mapping out like which parts. So this area, the parts that are closest to the sun, that's where I'm doing those highlights. Spread that out. Okay, so a couple little spots closest to the sun. Now we can add our bright highlights. So that kind of encompasses um, about the same area, but spread out a little bit more to add a little more shimmer throughout the picture. So I'm gonna clean that brush again and then pick up this really bright green. Okay, so then it's really bright green. I'll start center and work my way out so that way I really see what would the sun be shining on. So for example, right up next to it should have a splotch of green on it. These couple right there. So you see it like really pops out when you add that green. So all the ones surrounding the sun. I'm not completely covering the darker green that's there, but I'm adding this like next to it so that you still see all those different shades together. And that's what really make the, uh, it'll really make the painting stand out. Some little glimmers. All around that sun. Yeah, I don't know what happened to my music. It just kind of stopped. And like, of course, like when I wasn't live, you know, when I was setting everything up, music was just bumping nonstop. But all of a sudden, when I'm live recording, oh, no, not going to work today. But it's cool. Hopefully you get enough music from the sound of my voice. Y'all, if I could sing, I'll be singing right now. I won't do it anyway, just, you know, because I don't want y'all to like, cut this off because of my singing, but best believe if I could sing, I would be singing some of today's hits or something. Okay, so we still, yes, you see how that's coming to life? It's blooming out. That's what we want. So a little touch on each leaf that is like surrounding that center to really show that this sun is shining, it's making these leaves glisten, and it's really coming alive. Mm -hmm. I'm liking this one better than that one. I feel like every time I do this, I like, like something specific that stands out more than it did before. Now you'll notice that too, like if you paint something multiple times, like each time it's going to be different. 
you can have little things that you kind of like in each one. Okay, let's see. I want a little more because I don't want this to like just suddenly stop and have like a cutoff that you can clearly see. So I want these to kind of stagger in where the highlight stops. So I'm gonna spread this out a little bit to make it not so uniform, to make you really wanna look all throughout the picture for the little touches of light and not like disregard a good amount of the thing, you know? Okay. You see this is a mirror image. Okay, so it's over here. And I want to add a couple more highlights towards the sun, spreading them out. And then get yeah, over here, I feel like it's not enough. So if it's really bright up here, we should really see these bright leaves popping through. Okay, up in here too. And then up in here some more. So really, where's the center should have a lot more. There we go. And I'll bring a couple of them down because you know what? We still, the sun reaches this point, you know? Bring a couple of them down there. Add a little interest to our picture. This right here, put a little bit more. All right, I think I'm liking that. I'm about to stop pretty soon before I do too much, which I tend to do. Put that in there. Okay. And I'm gonna add a little more here just because I don't want this stem or vine or branch to be too strong standing out. I'm just cover that up a little bit so it's not such a solid black line. Okay, I think I think I'm good. I think I'm gonna leave it. Pretty sure I'm filling it. Do a couple more up here. I feel like this could have a little bit of something there. And then here, just so it's not too empty. Okay, that's it. I'm gonna leave it. Okay, now I just saw a little something. I'm like, okay. Next step now is to sign your picture. Um, I use my tiniest, tiniest brush to sign it. I'm gonna do it in black paint, probably down here. Uh, next to my branch so I can see it and people know who made it so you should always sign your work so that people know it's you. It's also a good idea to put the date. Usually on the back I'll put the whole date of when I made it and it's a great way to see your progress. So like if you continue to make more and more paintings you can see where you started and then where you end up. Um, so next to my signature, I usually put um, the year, but then I'll also document the whole date, too. Maybe not on the front, but it's a good idea to write down when you did each one. And like keep them in a, a folder or something. Like maybe you will end up giving it away or something or even selling it. Um, but I always take pictures of the stuff that you do. And that is it. That is your finished painting. We just did leave it in the sunset under two hours. That was about an hour 30. So let me see what you have. I would love, love, love to see your work. Uh, once you are done, you just clean your brushes out, clean off your paint palette, or use up any extra paint you have to paint something else. But that's it. So... Please share your pictures with me. I can't wait to see what you have. Just If anybody wants to join in, let me know in the chat box. Okay? So by the time I end up talking, y'all can let me know. 
Uh, but once again, if you enjoy this and want to do this every week with me, join my Painters Retreat. The green button is down there on the screen for paint parties for 20 bucks a month. Um, that is a limited time. This price will not stay like that forever. Um, but I am really enjoying sharing my painting with all of you. And it is just a very fun and therapeutic thing to do. Great way to relax. I, I believe there's a uh, study somebody told me about recently how painting like really helps you to just calm down. And like it's just really, really a good thing to do right now, especially if you can't get to the gym and you're the type who likes to work out a lot or maybe you like to get together with friends a lot. And like you can't do that. Still try to talk to people while you're at home. Still try to communicate with people. Um, find something, too, that's good for your spirit and that calms you down. So for me, that's painting. OK. All right, so I really enjoy painting with you. Send me pictures. Pop in the chat box. Have any left? Anything left to say? If you want to join on screen, send me any questions or comments you may have. And I hope to see you in the painters retreat. So I'm gonna give y'all three, two, one. Okay, so no takers for on screen. So I hope y'all have a good night and take care. <laughs>